bunch of different things here from the Rockville Hooters. Tough loss yesterday. Mm, yeah. I, I, listen, uh, you, we, we've had these conversations many times. This is a team that doesn't look similar, in my opinion, to the team from last year. And I look at young guys like yourself that were instrumental, you know, and, and, and really doing some great things. You know, Logan Paulson, another guy playing right now pretty much on one leg, doing a great job. Yeah. It, it just doesn't look like the, the young guys are the, the, the focal point as much as it was last year. Am, am I out there by saying that? Um, I, I wouldn't say that because we brought in a lot of young guys. You know, you got guys like Jordan Reed stepping up, uh, making some big plays and, mm -hmm. and, and having a big impact on this team. And um, I, I just think that we haven't put together a full game yet. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, yesterday, uh, being a part of the special teams unit, I feel like we lost that game for uh, uh, for, for our team. We uh, gave up points mm -hmm. and we put our defense in constantly put our defense in, in bad positions so as a as, as one of the special teams leaders I feel like you know it's on me Reed and, you know kill just went down but somebody somebody has to step up we got to make plays I mean we, there's no reason why you know Dwayne Harris should have 227 return yards on us that's that's embarrassing you guys are getting contributions from different people yesterday was a game where I thought the offense moved the ball, but they didn't punch the ball in in the red zone. You know, you get in the red zone three times and you get three field goals. Yeah, you got points, but it, it, you're playing against a pretty much a, a prolific offense in Dallas. At Dallas, you want to score. So it just seems like all three facets of the, uh, of the game haven't been together as far as special teams, defense, or offense. You guys seem like you're getting close, but it, you, you could be running out of time early. Yeah. And that's the sad part about it is that because we know – you know, just being from OTAs and, and training camp, the potential of this team, and we know that none of us are playing up to our potential. So it's very disappointing when we go out there and we put stuff like what happened on Sunday on film. Folks, uh, talking with Niles Paul from Washington Redskins live from here from uh, Hooters in Rockville, Maryland. <laughs> Again, I think most of the fans out here w would say that if they didn't see effort, I think fans would be a lot more upset. Most of the fans that I've talked to feel like the team is getting close. It seems like Robert's starting to get his legs under him. So it's not a it's, it, the picture's not bleak now. I mean, it, now it's, it's just it's not there. Is there something that you, do you need to see some chairs thrown? I mean, maybe you guys are doing that already. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean. Uh, I think you know, I mean, you're one of the enforcers on the team. I yeah. mean, is there somebody that needs to get in someone's face here? No, absolutely not. But I, mean, I think I think it's just it's just we're we're, so, we're always so close. Mm -hmm. uh, and like Coach said yesterday, he told us before the game, in order to win that game yesterday, we had to be there in all phases, special teams, offense, and defense. Um, I just feel like you know when you when you miss when you lose badly mm -hmm. in one phase, mm -hmm. you know you kind of set yourself back. Uh, I feel like if we would have been able to put on special teams, if we'd have been able to put our defense and our offense in better positions, mm -hmm. then we probably would have had a, a, that game would have been a different outcome. You look at the running game. Yesterday, the running game, I saw more effort to, to run the football. I did. Alfred has a nice run. And then it seems like, again, I, I don't know if maybe the game dictated it. Maybe Dallas did something to take the run away. But it seemed like Al Alfred broke that 45-yard run. It, it just seemed like there was no more running game after that. I mean, can you attribute some of that to play calling of Dallas or maybe you feel like you got away from it? Uh, I just feel like in that point in time, I, I, we were down at that point. And Five points, though. I think we were in a desperate need that we need. We were in a de like position where we desperately <laughs> needed to score. And I, I just felt like that's, that was where, you know, it went in that direction. Would you, prefer to run up and score. would you prefer to run the football pass if it were up to you? I prefer to pass. <laughs> well, I kind of knew you'd say that, but that was a setup question. You have yourself, again, Logan. You have Jordan. You have Fred. Fred, I don't know what's going on there, but four tight ends that I would match up with anybody in the league and say that perhaps this team has the, the best tight end tandem out there. But I, I don't see – the production outside of Jordan. And he's a rookie. He wasn't even on this team last year. Take nothing away from his skill set. But I don't feel like you nor Logan have been involved as much as you should. You go back to last week. 
against the Raiders. Both of you guys were out there. I saw passes being made to the tight end in certain situations. So I, I just don't – I don't know. Maybe it's, it's kind of like the old basketball syndrome. Maybe it's too many balls out there. I don't know. Yeah. Well, with a, having four tight ends, it's, it's difficult because, um, you know, s- some weeks it's different game plans and, and different schemes. Like uh, yesterday, I wasn't really involved in, in, in our, you know, offensive game plan sure. at, compared to the Oakland game. Uh, where I, you know, I, I was largely involved in mm-hmm. offense, but you know, I, I think just being patient each game, and you know, th- he's only going to play two or three tight ends are only going to play. Uh, I mean, m- mainly two, for the most part. And uh, yesterday it was it was Jordan Reed and Logan, and uh, I know Coach has full confidence, and if if one of them goes down, me and Fred can come in, and step in, and replace them. I mean, is it a situation though where you just play the to the person that you're playing against? Like, what, what attributed you and Logan playing more? Obviously, injuries, but it, it worked. You know, I just felt like there were certain times yesterday that, you know, things that you do underneath could have been used, things that, that Logan does could have been used. And I understand Logan's hurt right now. Um, I give him a lot of credit for playing, you know, the way he is. But something's got to change, man. You know, and I'm not going to say yet. I'm not going to say what was on my mind yet. <laughs> you know, we both got to go back to Ashburn. But it again, it just doesn't seem like the same, the same team I saw last year down the stretch. Uh, it doesn't feel like it. But uh, you know, everybody's been optimistic and, and getting back on track. Okay. Uh, we're, we're not we're, we're not counting ourselves out. Uh, we know we got a lot of things to fix, and, and we're going to fix it. Well, and, and the division you're in right now, I mean, it's still close. It's not. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> up in New York, they still feel like they have a shot <laughs> at on six. So you know, it's not over. Uh, I think you guys did play well yesterday. Uh, it just didn't, you know, maintain everything that was working. Uh, before we go to break here, Robert, looking at him, that looked like Robert yesterday. You know, is that something that you guys see in practice every day that finally, you know, we in the media and fans saw, or is that just he's warming up now? No, I mean, that's uh, something we see in practice. We've seen in practice every day. And uh, he, he was taking off, and I told him after the game, I said, you turned on the Jets on, yeah, on a couple did. of those times. <laughs> uh, so I, I was very happy to see that and, and just to see how our, you know how productive our offense was being. And, uh, you know, we only can com- continue to build from here. Is it the same place call yeah. for him, or is it just – I don't know. He it's looked same, fresh yesterday. It's the same, it's the same place. We uh, we ran a little bit more of our, uh, our read option stuff yesterday too. Yes, yes. You know, which, which is you know, which is what we do as a. That's offense. what you. That's you. You the blueprint for it. Yeah. And you know, everybody around the league was running that offense that you ran. So, okay, you get back to that. You get a big run from Alfred. You know, you get you guys working in tight ends. I mean, if everybody's on the same page, it, it could get interesting. Uh, we'll take a break. I and mean, when we come back, you know, we will talk a little bit about Chicago. Uh, <laughs> the Bears. It doesn't get any easier for you guys, that's for sure, man. You look at the schedule coming up. Uh, we'll, we'll break down the Bears uh, live here from Hooters in Rockville. Hang tight. Homeowners Relief Line can help save your home. We specialize in foreclosure assistance, and that's all we do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Homeowners Relief Line now. Homeowners Relief Line has a network of attorneys, and our agents are available to speak to you right away. New laws are in effect that may save your home, so call Homeowners Relief Line now. Wednesday is Wings Day at Hooters. Get 10 boneless wings and fries for just $6.99. Medical emergencies. This is Life Alert. Are you okay? I've fallen and I can't get up. I'm calling for help right now. Sharon, we received a smoke signal coming from your kitchen. Get out now. We're calling the fire department. Home invasion. 
Emergencies away from home. I'm trying to get to my car, but it's still a ways away. I'm right here and we'll stay on the line with you and we can contact the police if necessary. And you can have this protection away from home for just $19.95 per month. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Life Alert saves a life from a catastrophe every 11 minutes. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-830-1951. That's 1-800-830-1951. Call now. In 1990, in Severn, Maryland, the daughter of a clergyman was discovered by a music industry insider while pumping gas at a service station. The odds of her getting signed and spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of this former church choir singer going on to sell 40 million records? One in 15 million. The odds of the same woman winning six Grammy Awards and starring in two Broadway plays? One in 75 million. The odds of this musician and performer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Tony Braxton. And I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Imagine, with a simple push of a button, you could be on your way to getting firm, sculpted abs and a sexy waistline with the Contour Core Sculpting System. It's the breakthrough technology that requires no machines, no getting on the floor, no stress, and no strain. Contour. Contour. The contour is the real deal. The secret is Contour's exclusive auto-active muscle toning technology, the digital breakthrough that automatically targets all your abdominal muscles, including your upper abs, lower abs, obliques, and even that stubborn lower belly. Thermographic testing proves Contour activates your entire core. The Contour Core Sculpting System comes with a one-size-fits-all Contour core belt, electronic controller with custom digital settings, batteries, and a one-year warranty, plus an instructional guide and sensible eating plan. And it's all yours to try for 30 days for just $14.95. There's never been an easier, more effective way to get great-looking abs. So call an order right now. Welcome back, everyone, live from uh, Hooters in Rockville. Myself, Lake Lewis, Niles Paul, the Washington Redskins, breaking down yesterday's uh, Washington Redskins loss to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we're going to just break this down just a little bit more because I know it's eating at you, and, and it's tough. Every time uh, a loss comes up, I say to myself, man, <laughs> it's going to be tough with the guys coming out. It's just I understand. I mean, a, a loss like the one we had yesterday is, is extremely tough. Mm -hmm. Knowing that, that at one point in time, the game was so close, so close, and we and we and you we fought had, back. Yeah, we fought back, and we, I feel like we had the momentum to win the game. At one point in time in the game, I was like, "Yeah, we we still got a shot to win this game." We probably in my mind, I was like, "We're probably going to win this game right now." And I think it was about, I think it might have been third quarter, early third quarter, and then everything just <laughs> just went wrong. It possibly could. Well, you know, I, I will say I did see you back there for uh, kickoff return. Yeah. Josh Morgan's back there for punt return. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, this isn't on you. So, Redskins, it's not coming from him. It's coming from me. I, I don't see Josh Morgan as a punt returner. And I see you as a guy that could do that. I mean, would you would you relish the opportunity to return punts as well? Um, I mean, last time I returned punts was my uh, rookie year. But... What, what J-Mo did yesterday, I mean, I, I was, you know, I, I'll go out there and block for a guy like that any day. I mean, he ran hard. Yeah, he ran he, hard. I'll give him that. <laughs> he, he didn't fair. He wasn't scared. To, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he, he didn't fair catch the ball. You know, he got, he got what he could. He got up the field. I mean, I, <laughs> what more could you ask for? What, what's missing on special teams? Because right now it does look problematic. Uh, a lot of people were upset with uh, Coach Keith Burns. I mean, I, heck, he took a penalty last <laughs> night, you know. <laughs> but it, it doesn't seem like – you, you go back to last year, Niles. A lot of people were calling for Danny Smith's head. Yeah. And you guys love Danny Smith. Love you know, Smith. every guy I talked to, you know, loved him. There's a lot of guys that were on that special teams unit that aren't here anymore. Is it just a bunch of new guys learning a different system or, and, and learning where they're supposed to be? Yeah. I, I think on our special teams unit, 
it, it's all about effort. You know, you gotta you gotta want to be out there. You gotta want to. Everybody has to want to make a play, and you know. And I think you, you gotta you get a few guys, you know, who, who want to be out there, but you know, sometimes they feel like, well, you know, I I, I can take this play off or something. No, nah, you can't. <laughs> you need. I think you need all eleven guys to come down there and try to make a play. You can't. You can't have you know three guys trying to make a play. Yeah. And then everybody else is sitting there watching because then that's a problem. I mean, last year you guys were. I mean, you. I just remember going down the stretch. It was almost like the 11 on those punt, you know, coverage teams, and you guys were getting after it. Yeah. You know, yourself, uh, uh, Zoe Alexander's not here now. Uh, Chris Wilson's not here. Uh, DJ Gomes not here. Those are guys that you, you're running mates, technically. Yeah. You, you miss those guys. <laughs> Definitely. I missed them because I, I knew that, um, you know, just speaking as a, as a gunner, if I, if I funnel the ball back inside, by, by, uh, if I funnel the punt returner back inside, I know, that those, out. I know that that guy is about to be destroyed. And, and that return man knew that if he goes inside, right, then he's about to get killed. So he had no choice but to give me that tackle, you know? I, I saw guys, honestly, man, that were – they were almost afraid to return the ball. I mean, you look at years gone by, there were guys fair catching out there, and they still had like 10, 15 yards before Absolutely. anyone got down there. And that was, that was the level of respect we had, at, at, you know, at – as a special teams unit, and I, and I think you know we can get back to that. We have to get back to that if we want to, you know, have any success in this league. We need to get back to that. Well, what's the what's the difference as far as philosophies? I mean, Keith Burns, uh, you know, was in Denver for eight years. Danny Smith's been around. I mean, is there a difference as, as far as what he's trying to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, their 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 philosophies are completely different. Okay, you know, they uh, they coach they coach differently. The, the schemes are different, and you know. I thought that we were getting, you know, we were fairly used to it by the time OTAs, but it's clear that, you know, nobody's, not everybody's, you know, acclimated to the uh, scheme. Yeah, you have different guys coming in. I mean, it was good to see Rob Jackson yesterday, yeah. you know, came in and picked up right right where he left off, intercepting Tony Romo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he got another uh, interception in there, and I think that he's definitely a, an added plus to the defense. Uh, listen. Yeah, the defense gave up 31. Well, they didn't give up 31 special teams, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the defense played well overall. Absolutely. I, I did. We, as a special teams unit, put the defense in bad positions multiple times with big returns. We gave up points. I, you know, I, I almost apologized to Fletch for that. I'm like, yo, we, <laughs> if we got to play better. We right. have to. And you, you, you can't win a game when, you're, when you know, Dwayne Harris is returning the ball to the you know, the 20 every time. Every time he touched the ball, he was he had bad intentions in his mind, and yeah. that's not good. Chicago coming up, and don't say me, it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any easier. I mean, it just it doesn't. You know, they're they're a team that feels good about themselves right now. Uh, they're a little different on the road. If there's any consolation to it, but I, I think there's more pressure on you guys now. You got to get a win, and you're at home. Uh, you know people are going to be looking at you. You're going to be scrutinized all week. You know, this is the final segment of doing this here where we're going to something a little bit more jovial. But you look at Chicago, and you look at what they have on offense. You know, they, they can do some things. Brandon Marshall, one of the best receivers in the game. Jay Cutler seems to be very uh, comfortable in Mark Tressman's offense. Special teams, your, your side of the ball as well. You yeah. know, uh, Devin Hester. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It doesn't get any easier at all. I mean, we, we, we know that, <laughs> you know, and um, uh, it's a challenge and we're going to have to step up to the challenge. We went, you know, we just had the worst special teams game I've ever been a part of, in my opinion. Uh, and I think it's up to us, the players, to turn that around and, and, and come out and show, you know, the Bears that, you know, the type of special teams unit we want to be known as around the league. We want to be we want to get back to where we were last year. Fear. You know, fear special teams unit. Uh, you, you did get, you know, one of your special teams aces back as far as your field goal kicker, Kai Forbath. And, yeah. you know, you had the one miss. But overall, you, you could see that, you know, he's automatic. Yeah. You know, so that's a that's a, a big plus as well. So, I mean, lots, lots of angles that we could talk about. Um, obviously, it's going to be dissected all week uh, here on Sports Journey. You can hear it on CBS Sports Radio, a whole bunch of different uh, outlets. Uh, so, we, we try to switch gears, you know, and, and let the fans out there, if you want to, you know, chime in, let us know any thoughts that you have, any questions, or if you want to, you know, 
tell this guy what's up you can do that uh, we'll take a break here in a little bit uh, real quick let's try to try to lighten the mood up a little bit mm-hmm. <laughs> when Alfred scored had the 45 yard run and he did his you know did his little baseball bat thing uh, that was the first time I saw Alfred look like Alfred that that just the cut you know it just everything came together there I, 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 you can see Alfred, you know, getting yeah. his giving his full <laughs> yeah. confidence back as a running back. Yeah, you know, uh, and, and that's the type of stuff he's capable of. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that that definitely you know was a uh, was a big part of the game. And we were like, you know, because he's out there fighting, and, and you just want to go out there. And, he's running hard yesterday. Yeah, he really was out there fighting the whole game, and you just want to go out there and be like, Alfred out here fighting. We got we all got to fight. We all got to keep fighting. I would like to see more Alfred and Roy together, though. I mean, maybe not on the field at the same time. But I just think that those two guys could be real dynamic. I mean, Roy is a big guy that, that has speed. He'll, he'll lower his shoulder on yeah. you as well. You could wear some teams down with that. Yeah, a lot of people forgot about Roy, man. But I think he's, he's, uh, he's making a name for himself again this year and showing why, Good know, dude, why he was such an important part you know, of our offense. He, he's one of my favorite guys on the team. He's just, he's just a, a class act. Yeah. He's different, <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> but he's but he's a good dude. I know that's your guy from Nebraska. Absolutely, you know you want to see him touch the ball as well. Uh, Nebraska got a big win this weekend. Oh, I know they they got a big win. Before we go to break, I'm gonna put put you know a good friend of ours right there, Nate Prater, put him on the spot because he said that Nebraska was trash. That's those are his exact words. Well, Nate Nate is still a little, <laughs> he's a little butthurt because Nebraska didn't offer him. Um, and he had to go to K-State. Oh, you know? so that's why. Yeah. That's why. He I thought he told me he didn't want to go to Nebraska. No, he, they didn't offer him. So, okay, okay. You know. So, so that's why he goes back. Okay, all right. So, look, we're going to take a break, folks, when we come back. More with myself, Lake Lewis, and Alice Paul to watch the Redskins live from Hooters and Rockville. Hang tight. tell you some of the reasons people get into trouble with credit cards. A job loss or salary cut, an unexpected expense, a divorce, a business loss, or even helping a family member or friend in need. At Consolidated Credit, we understand that debt problems are not about overspending. It's about emergencies and unexpected situations. Consolidated Credit has helped over 5 million people just like you. The options for getting out of debt have never been better. We can reduce your interest rates, cut your monthly payments, and help you get out of debt fast. The time to call Consolidated Credit is now. There are a lot of ways to get into trouble with debt. There's only one trusted way to get out. Consolidated Credit. When debt is the problem, we are the solution. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call toll-free 1-800-426-6016. That's 1-800-426-6016. Call now. If you're disabled and unable to work, pay attention to the following message. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits through Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, we can help. You'll be matched up with an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, deal with Social Security for you, and handle all appeals. Best of all, there's no fee until you receive your benefits. To get started, call the number on your screen now. And keep in mind, there are a vast number of conditions that make you eligible for disability benefits and dozens of additions that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call the Citizens Disability Helpline today for a free, no-obligation consultation. Call 1-800-735-0219. Call now. Health Insurance Update. This just in for all uninsured Americans with or without pre-existing conditions. The recent health care bill will not take effect until at least 2014, leaving families and individuals lacking health insurance with no immediate solution to their concerns. Meanwhile, medical problems continue to be the number one cause of bankruptcies. Here's the good news. 
A health insurance hotline has been established to provide affordable health insurance for all uninsured Americans and yes, uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Call the number on your screen now and in less than 10 minutes you could receive a choice of affordable plans from the hotline network. This is not a discount card. You will have access to doctors, hospitals, dental care, infant care, and emergency services. Call the health insurance hotline now and get you and your family covered today. Call 800-794-1817. That's 800-794-1817. Call now. That's a good pour. Frosty glass. Perfect amount of foam. Thanks, coach. How's your Bloody Mary? Spicy. Wings? Always fresh, never frozen. All right. Who's the primary on Spider 2Z snag? It's the fullback out of the backfield. If he gets jammed, I'm hitting the flanker on a curl route. You're good. I know. Huddle up at Hooters. Why would you go anywhere else, man? All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, Hooters here in Rockville, Lake Lewis, with uh, Washington Redskin tight end Niles Paul. And right now we have a uh, manager here, Alex McCrimmon, yep, joining us here on the show. What's going on? Hey, how's it going? You're a big sports fan. I saw you arguing with our uh, talent manager uh, <laughs> earlier as far as uh, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Uh, you're a big Redskins fan, so I, I know you may have some questions you want to ask now. But So I told him, go ahead and fire away. Just All right. Keep, just don't say anything. Get them upset, though. No, no, definitely not. I'm a big Redskins fan, and I would never put any of my boys in that in that situation. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, first, I'd like to say, you know, I've, I'm a really big fan. I've been, I've been watching you since you've been in the league, and I, you know, I appreciate all the hard work that you put in for the team, Thank and you, man. all that stuff is really appreciated. Uh, I got a lot of friends in Redskin Nation that just want to see us get a win. Uh, what are some of the things that you've been working on uh, in practice and the things that the team's been doing to try to stay focused to get ready for Chicago this upcoming week? Uh, we, we haven't actually started, you know, uh, practice for Chicago. We start That starts Wednesday. Right, right. So I forgot. We, <laughs> today we had a uh, we film review, which was horrible. And then uh, tomorrow is uh, for National NFL Day Off. Oh, okay, okay. So how did you feel about the last last game, man? Uh, I was I was embarrassed because I know that, um, you know, being one of the loser special teams, it was, it was embarrassing to, you know, to put that on film and to have, you know, people kind of licking their chops to go against us on special teams now instead right. of fearing us. Right, yeah. One of the things that, I, you know, as a, as a Skins fan, a lot of the players saw the special teams yesterday and they, you know, got a lot of fingers pointed. Um, what are some of the things that you think that were the breakdowns last, last week? Uh, I think we just got outplayed. Uh, we gotta make, we gotta make tackles. We gotta make plays. We gotta, everybody has to get to the ball. Uh, I, I think you know we have to we have to get our motor going and, and um, play a complete game on every phase of special teams. Right, right. Um, one thing that you know on the changing gears, you know, we don't want to dwell on last last week's mm -hmm. loss. I mean, too much. I mean, that's you know in the past. Um, what are you, what do you think the, the the biggest obstacle moving forward is for for the special teams and the team in general? What do you think some of the things we can do to get better? Uh, we just got to get everybody to buy in on special teams and, and put forth the effort that that we know as a unit that we that we are capable of. Um, and we got to start winning games. <laughs> so, I mean, we got to get going. That's, that's that's the biggest that's the biggest thing. We have to start winning games, right. and we know that. And um, uh, I. You know, I'm not, I trust in Coach Shani, I, I trust in his plan, and, and we're going to get something going. We're, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't count us out yet. Oh. Does, it, does, it, does it help you guys now to know that you did it last year, that you won seven in a row? I mean, it, I know you don't want to have to win seven in a row. You'd like to win seven in a row because you're good enough to do it. But is it okay to know that you, you did something last year that is possible again? I, I think it's just us knowing what – you know, we're capable of on offense, defense, and special teams. Mm. And just going out there and putting it on film, you know, on Sundays. And, you know, that, that that's the biggest thing is just going out there on Sundays and putting it on film. Uh, we know we know that we're a good team, and we know what we're capable of, mm -hmm. and we have to show everybody in the world what we're capable of. Now, Alex, you're, you're the manager here. Uh, let everybody out there know, you know, what's uh, – What's so great about Hooters and Rockville? I mean, we've, we've got a nice setup with Hooters, you know, across the board. Uh, but, but what makes this place unique? Uh, one thing, I, you know, I'm pretty relatively new to the company, and you know, I've been here for about, about two and a half months or so. And what I've noticed is that we're really hospitable. You know, we've got really friendly girls here. Um, we really try to take care of the clientele. 
um, that come in. We try to have different sports games on for everybody, so everybody has a, a nice variety. Um, and, and, you know, so you can feel kind of like kind of at home, kind of almost like a neighborhood bar. And uh, that's kind of we have a lot of you know, regulars that come in and, and, and all quite often. And um, like I said, we have some of the prettiest girls in the area. So, you know, we're definitely you know, blessed with that. So we can definitely uh, you know, take care of you in the, in the right way. Well, I'm going to put you on the spot here. This is a question that uh, I'm not going to say Niles and me came up with, but I'm sure he wanted to know the answer to this question, I too. I didn't ask any questions. See, this is where we, this is where we change the show, folks, where we try to have some fun in here. You know, it's not all serious. Now it's like, man, I don't want to keep talking about this. I have a question that I've always, you know, me just putting that Penn State Georgetown education here, thinking something. What uh, would happen if a gentleman walked in off the street and said he wanted to work here? I, is, is that not allowed? I'm just asking. Well, we're we're an image based company, so if okay. you can't, if you don't fit in, not anybody can be, you know, work at Hooters. You know, you can't. You know, we don't all have. Everybody <laughs> I, doesn't I just, have. Not a, that I want to work at Hooters. You know, I'm just, you know, it all depends on how you can look in those orange shorts, and uh, um, that's a, a big later? determinant. So, so, so if a dude, so if you a dude, job nah, man, come on now. Now I'm just saying, if a dude <laughs> came up and said he wanted to wear just orange khaki shorts and a muscle tank top. That, that doesn't really and tasks like Niles. I mean, you, you he couldn't get it. Couldn't that, get to get. Yeah, we we would we would have a line cook position, or we could actually you know wash some dishes. Maybe I'll a management position. Yeah, I put you in the back. Things man. like that. You know, <laughs> well, I'm in the front. You know, I work here, but okay. uh, I'm not as pretty as the girls. Definitely. So they definitely you know they have a leg up. But you know, we we try to understand that Hooters is a you know pretty much a a a a, a, a uh, what is it, entertainment. And uh, image-based company, so it's not something that just anybody can do. It's, it's not even just a guy. Not every every female can do it. Not you know, age demographics may vary as well. So. I think I just helped you. You know why? Because uh, corporate wants me to send some of these promo things back. And you just you just answered that pretty pretty fairly, pretty well. Because they may have been like, "What is he talking about?" So now nah, that's 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 cool. Diplomacy is part of it. <laughs> every 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 Hooters I've been at, you know you you get a chance to, to see the personalities of the staff. And it's true that if the staff isn't bubbly, you know, greeting people, it's just not going to work. And, right. uh, you know, this is our second time coming out here, and I think uh, the staff has been great. You know, just not to say that because I'm sitting here, but they have. They've been really good. Yourself has been a, a very hospitable a man right here, James, doing a great job. So, you know, appreciate it. Yeah, we're here for you. I mean, we're, we're part of being a part of the community. Um, I think sometimes... You know, our image may get a, a certain reputation, but it's, you know, sometimes it's dispelled by just coming in and checking us out and seeing what we're all about. We're here about customer service and, you know, basically making sure you get some good food and can enjoy yourself and, you know, be, be safe and responsible. What, what's it like on Sundays? Like, what was it like last night in here? Was um, it? It, w- it was pretty subdued. We're, we're a big Redskins uh, area, but you definitely have our Cowboys friends. Our, one of our locals, Mark, is here. He's a big Cowboys fan. And um, <laughs> you definitely had a little spatter and a little trash talk going on in, in the restaurant, but it was also it was all fun. All yeah, fun. It, it, there's nothing crazy, nothing, you know, we, we're very, you know, easygoing and, and, and pretty respectful of each other. And, you know, what, it's, it's a game in, a, in, a, in the end of it. But it was definitely packed, and we definitely had some, you know, excited fans last night. Now, as out of everybody you played this year, which team do you think talked the most trash? Uh, I want to say I want to say the Cowboys. Really? Yeah. I believe it. I, I, believe I didn't it. see a lot of that yesterday. Was it just <laughs> subtle talking, or it was out there? No, it, it was out there. <laughs> <laughs> and you were leading the charge, weren't you? <laughs> about it. I didn't. I was. Do you think not, of, not after not after uh, Coach Shanahan screamed at me? <laughs> <laughs> now, do you think a little bit was that from a residual from last year's? Uh, you know, hammering them two, two times last year, and then you they know, did seem the a little up for last you guys. Year. They, they oh, did yeah. seem up. They yeah. did. <laughs> they, they had it out for us, and uh, they let it be known early. Wow. Yeah. Well, they still have to come here. Absolutely. You know, and I'm sure Redskins fans will be waiting for that. Mm-hmm. And when they come here, things could be totally different. Things could be drastic. I, I will say this: if you're a Cowboys fan, I think right now they look like the most complete team so far in the division. But I still think this team right here has a uh, look at Tommy over there. He's a Cowboys fan. <laughs> but, 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 I, but I do say I think that this team here, talent-wise, we're not seeing the talent level yet. Yeah. And if the talent level is shown, then it could be real interesting. Eagles win yesterday. They might have a quarterback controversy. You know how it is in Philadelphia. We can ask good old Nate about that over there. <laughs> uh, Nick Foles looked pretty good in, in Tampa. Uh, 
That's Mike Vick's team, though. Make no mistake about it. <laughs> right. Mike Vick is a. Uh, I think Mike Vick is one of the most over, not rated, underrated. He's very underrated, and I think that over his career, I don't. I don't think people realize how dynamic he is. I, I just don't think people see. He can throw. He can run. He can do everything. I think everybody, you know, when you think of Michael Michael Vick, though, don't you think a lot of um, the the injury prone and things He's like that? He's injury prone. Yeah. That's true. You know, that that might be. But I think the biggest knock against him is that he can't stay healthy for a whole season. What do you guys think about what, what do you Nas? What do you think about Russell Wilson in Seattle? Oh man, I, I love the way he plays. I got you know I got a chance to watch him play against my boys in Nebraska, mm-hmm. and uh, I, even at that point, I knew he was going to be you know something special in the NFL. I, I mean, I love the way he plays. Do you think he's helping smaller quarterbacks? I mean, look at. A guy like Johnny Manziel. Do you? I mean, two different type of quarterbacks. Yeah, but do you think that he's going to help a guy because he's only five eleven? Do you think that he'll help, uh, you know, more athletic quarterbacks get an opportunity to really play quarterback? I mean, I, I think you'd have to take into consideration. I mean, if you if you have all the skill sets, you know, that he has, and sure, you're doing what he do, he's doing or what he did in college, then you have to give him opportunity. Because I just see all these quarterbacks in college like. Teddy Bridgewater, uh, you know, Johnny Manziel we talked about. Uh, there's a couple guys that, that really aren't the biggest guys, and they're not Drew Brees-type quarterbacks. Right. They're guys that can get around. But I look at Russell Wilson, and I, I don't even know how to categorize him because he's not – I mean, do you think he's a great athlete? Uh, I mean, he's athletic, but I don't feel like he's – He's not he's, like RG3 yeah, or anything he's not, like He's not like Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. athletic as, you know, Rob, uh, RG3 and, and Colin Kaepernick and, or Mike Vick. So would you say that he is more of a pocket passer I think, over athlete? I think you get the best of, you know, ever, like both words from him. Both yeah, words. yeah, yeah that's, that's fair. That's fair. I just, man, I look at Seattle and it's like you, you think they're done, you know, and they get in the fourth quarter and they keep making these comebacks. Seattle right now, from my opinion, they're, they're, they're the team to beat in the uh, NFC. They're a pretty scary team. <laughs> pretty scary team. Now, when you played out there. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, if you'd asked me that last year, I definitely told you the Seahawks. That question about trash talk. <laughs> they know how to. Get, we all know people, how that game is. They know how to get people's heads. They do. They definitely do. It, you know, it, it, you got to stop them. You know, you you got to you got to strike back. That's that's the way to do it. Indy Indy actually was a team that you don't look at them as a trash talking team. They were going toe to toe with Seattle and they end up beating them. Yeah. So maybe if you don't let them get in your head, maybe you actually get in their head a little bit. Maybe. Listen, uh, Niles Paul, Washington Redskins right here. We have uh, Alex McCrimmon sitting here, manager of Rockville Hooters. Uh, what's, the, what's the big thing? What's the big event that comes through here? Uh, we got a lot of events. We have one of the couple events that we have coming up um, is we're going to have a Halloween. Like the girls are going to be doing Halloween dress up and things like that for the weekend. So we get three days of Halloween costumes. Uh, we do bikini contests. Um, we do our calendar. We have our, uh, one of our calendar girls, Caitlin, has made the calendar, so we've been doing calendar signings. Um, we do a lot of things that, are, that you know, we try to infuse the community in and, and get people involved. Well, well speaking of calendars, now I was probably thought I was going to go the whole show without mentioning it, <laughs> but this guy right here is becoming a, a, a calendar-type guy. He's got a nice setup with... Uh, with Under Armour, and uh, my girls were talking all about you yeah, before you man. came in. You so go, they're you, like, "Who's that guy you, over there?" You go, you go in your <laughs> local Macy's. You see a half naked dude. That's him, Stop. right they, there. They were googling you. They were Stop. googling you. They, I got a girl in there. She said that she found her future husband. I don't know where oh, is she at. Where is she? Man. She's somewhere around there. <laughs> Hey, 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 listen, come on, man. You, 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 my boy, and all. But let's let's be honest. Has anyone approached you since you've uh, since you've done this with, with, with Under Armour? Since you've gone up in Macy's, has anyone said that's I've seen you before? Or? No, I mean, people have sent me pictures of, of it, but not really. Nobody's <laughs> approached me. No. Yeah, have, have you rehearsed like what you're gonna say if they say that's you? I'll, I'll deny. It. <laughs> How do you have any? Depends on who's what she looks like when she asks you. I'll deny it. No. <laughs> No. You're going to do a GQ spread? It's not me at all. Yeah. Right, listen, listen, listen. I'll tell you a joke. This guy's got one of the classic lines on uh, I'll, I'll, you, him and uh, yeah, I'm going to say it, him and D.Y., Darrell Young. They have this thing where, you know, sometimes if young ladies ask them, you know, what do they do for a living? You know, they want to test them, see where their head is, you know. So they've come up with some different uh, some different lines. And one of the lines he told me was he was a piano player at Nordstrom. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's my favorite job. <laughs> Hey, that's pretty smart, though. They weed them out quick. Did, did she Google you? Huh? Did, did she Google you? No. When I told when I told the girl that she uh, she actually was a singer, so she was like, "Well, maybe we oh can, for real, maybe we can collab." I'll say you <laughs> messed up. So I kind of I kind of had to. He had to let her know. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Is that, um, is that one of your best lines? The, the piano the, player at Nordstrom. Yeah, I love that. I love telling people. What, that. what was the one D Y said? He uh, he said he parked cars somewhere. He told me he parked cars at uh. Uh, I, I remember him saying that. Just, it's, it was it, was it the uh, the Mayflower or something like that? He was like it was like one of these big Richie hotels. He was like he parked cars there, and the girl was like, "Well, you know, she couldn't talk to him." <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So anyway, folks, do you give him your real name? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> have you, you you've never been a uh, you, you've never been stalked? Have you? No. Mm-mm. Would you know if you were being stalked? Probably not. <laughs> that's, that's what I figured. That's I don't know, man. I got that. five girls that Googled you before you came in. So that's a, that's called awareness. That's not that's not stalking. That's just being being aware. So nah, you know, I just always wanted to know. You know, I've never had anything put up on a Macy's wall, that's, and it's not like that's Kmart or so something you, like that. You just want to embarrass me. Nah, that. man, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean, if you're gonna go up on a wall, Macy's. So that is pretty with impressive. That, with the whole thing, huh? I didn't even know I was doing that. Really? Yeah. I, I, you know, it was me and my brother Nate, and we went up there, and uh, I was originally just supposed to do like the soup, the uh, the superhero. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. That was the only reason why I was up there, and they told me like everybody, everybody does it. Tori Smith, uh, George St. Pierre, you know, all these guys. It's like we we want you to do the uh, the underwear shoot, and I was like, all right, okay. So they have they have my brother Nate, who's hilarious. <laughs> in there while they're doing the shoot and his sole purpose his job was to make everybody laugh like that's what that's what they told him to do so everybody's just packing up <laughs> the whole entire time so you weren't you weren't embarrassed doing that nah I man you know we, if you nah <laughs> there, there we go there, there we go ain't he's no coming shame. out now ain't no shame in what, I mean I'm know? just I'm just saying you know he, he, they, they didn't airbrush the tats no. I remember years ago, you know, you little younger, but you know, guys had tats. They, Allen Iverson, yep. you remember they, yep. they airbrushed them off of them, literally. Now, the more tats, the better. They wouldn't even put them on the Olympic team. Remember, they wouldn't nah, even. They wouldn't, had tats. They had tattoos. Right. Like, yeah, they had tattoos mm-hmm. on. So in Macy's that. right now, because you know I can't. You my boy, I can't go up there and look for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, you, is, is it gone? No, it's, it's on there. Wow, tats there. Huh? Is it in wow. the Macy's over in Dallas? I, I, I don't know. The people have just like I know it. Like my uh, my brother lives in Houston and he was in Macy's and he saw it. Oh, uh, so it's like national everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, back home, it's there. Like people were sending me back in the Oh, see, see, you you definitely don't need to be embarrassed about that. I thought it was just regional. You, <laughs> yo, hey man, that's <laughs> that, that's national. You're trying me right now. No, I'm You're serious, trying. man. That's that's decent though. All Sounds right. like he has a life after uh, football. No. <laughs> but, hey, listen, man. It's gonna make some money. You what you no. gotta do. Nope. Nope. That's all right. We're saying years from now, though. We're not talking now. We're talking so you years get, down you the gotta line. Get, you got to get them trending. You know? <laughs> Niles Paul Macy's trending. Nope. You know, hashtag. Nope. All right. <laughs> Look, folks, we'll, we'll take a break. Hey, you did well. Thank you very this much. This is your first time doing something like this? First time I've ever done a radio, sh- radio show in my life. And, and you weren't you weren't scared of anything? No, not at all. Wow, you guys are pretty cool. You know, I'm, I'm used See, to normally that's the enforcer. Sometimes people are afraid <laughs> around there. Nah, you know, I, play, I play college football. I play for Florida a and I've been around football players. Oh, yeah, football Florida? Football. Okay, yeah. a rattler. Yeah, I was a rattler. Okay. I played for Magruder High School, so I'm, I'm used to around be around football players. Okay, so you know what's coming up this week, Miami, Florida State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a big game. Every every year in Florida, that's a big we'll, game. I'm going to put you on the spot because we are. I was already questioning that Peyton Manning Florida thing, State. Man. You don't even have to ask me. Florida State. Florida State's looking tough. They got that young freshman. He's looking pretty tough. He can throw the ball a little bit. They're, they're looking pretty good. All right. Not bad. Not bad. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, uh, what, another segment, we're going to bring in uh, Liz Robbins, who's a uh, here we're gonna bring her in from Sirius XM. We'll have her come on with us just for a few minutes, and then we we'll wrap it up. But uh, we'll take a break. We'll be back live from uh, Hooters here in Rockville. Want clear skin all over? Well, get set because Proactive's deep cleansing body wash is back, and so is free shipping. Two hot summer deals. 
Now Proactive clears acne on your face and body, so you feel confident all over. And the body wash is yours free when you order Proactive today. The deep cleansing wash, it really exfoliates the skin. I use that on my arms, my legs, my chest. My skin was smoother. It got rid of the small little bumps on my shoulders and back. Proactive has a $40 value, but with today's special offer, pay just $19.95 and your shipping is free. Plus, get the deep cleansing wash free to polish your skin to perfection. I went out and bought a little spaghetti strap dress and it was a really amazing feeling. Act fast and we'll add a free travel size green tea moisturizer. Don't wait. Order Proactive today and get free shipping, but only for a limited time. Are you stressed over credit cards and other debts? Maybe through no fault of your own? Imagine how it would feel to have that weight lifted right off your shoulders. Well, here's some good news from America's trusted name in debt relief. Care One providers have already helped over four and a half million people in debt, and we can help you today. Just call this toll-free number to speak with a friendly representative, and in just minutes, you'll get your free debt relief analysis. Regardless of your situation, Care One has an option for you. We are there to help, and we do that in a way that's empathetic and supportive without judging their financial situation. The credit card companies, I feel, are trying to keep you in debt and trying to keep it so you owe them money forever. And Care One is a good way to get you out of that and get you out of it fast. A big burden was lifted off of my shoulders. Care One threw me a lifeline. Call Care One. They will help you. Get debt relief from a company you can trust. Just Care call the toll-free number today. That's a good pour. Frosty glass. Perfect amount of foam. Thanks, Coach. How's your Bloody Mary? Spicy. Wings? Always fresh, never frozen. All right. Who's the primary on Spider 2Z Snag? It's the fullback out of the backfield. If he gets jammed, I'm hitting the flanker on a curl route. You're good. I know. Huddle up at Hooters. Why would you go anywhere else, man? Do you know what most people do when they realize they're struggling to pay their mortgage? Nothing. Surprising? Perhaps, but it's just too humiliating, too painful, too complicated, too scary. As the bills pile up and the pressure keeps growing, people just stop. But if people take action, if they reach out, make a call, they have a much better chance at a positive outcome. That is the simple message the Making Home Affordable program wanted to send. We created a new TV commercial that held a mirror to the problem. We showed people literally stopped, frozen, petrified, paralyzed by their own mortgage struggles. In our research, people told us, that's how I feel. Apparently, it's how a lot of people feel. Calls to the Hope Hotline went up 25% on the day of the launch and have held steady since at nearly 70,000 calls per month. Since 2010, the campaign has received over $33 million in donated media, including TV, radio, and outdoor and hard-hit housing markets, even signage in Times Square. This level of exposure, along with robust search engine marketing, frequent events, program announcements, and a revamped website, are making an impact. Website visits are at an all-time high, nearly 900,000 visits in January alone. But the most important statistic of all, over 900,000 people have received permanent loan modifications as a result of the program. And we have an opportunity to make an even bigger difference in the lives of struggling homeowners. The federal government has extended the application period for the Making Home Affordable program for another year, meaning even more people will get real help, real answers, right now. Dear Bowflex, I dropped eight dress sizes, 36 pounds, and all I had to do was walk. This is the Bowflex Tread Climber Machine, the easiest way to walk and burn up to twice the calories in less time. By combining the motion of a treadmill, a stepper, and an elliptical, you get the calorie burning benefits of all three workouts at once. I lost 30 pounds in four months. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Call now for your free DVD and information kit. You'll see how the tread climber burns up to twice the calories of a treadmill. 
Plus, you'll learn how you can own a tread climber machine today with special financing for 18 months. Within the first couple of weeks, I started to lose inches. I lost 50 pounds in three months using the tread climber. Call or go online to buytc.com for your free info kit. We'll also send you the Bowflex Insider's Guide with a personal fitness assessment to help you jumpstart your Bowflex body today, absolutely free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bowflex. Sincerely, J.D. Weber. Welcome back, everyone. Rockville Hooters, Lake Lewis. Sitting here to my right, we have a, a, a lovely young lady right here, good friend, does some great things here in the Washington metropolitan area, uh, Liz Robbins. You can hear her on Sirius XM. We can hear you uh, from time to time. I've seen you on CBS uh, doing some football coverage, and she's got a great Twitter handle, Liz Locker Room. That's almost like a, becoming a, a claim to fame type thing for you. Yeah, it actually is. It was uh, like a branding, branding marketing, and so far it's been working. And it's been getting me great opportunities. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And to her right, we have uh, Mr. Nate Prater, and uh, Nate does a lot with us here at Sports Journey. And uh, he's another guy that's big into, you know, Twitter branding and, uh, you know, sure. putting out some crazy tweets and stuff <laughs> like that. Uh, Just being human. That's yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's his saying. So, you know, I have two uh, social media gems right here. Uh, you know, I wanted to talk with you guys about uh, some college football. You know, uh, Penn State, my school, uh, had a big win this weekend. And, and I'm going to tell you a story, Liz, that's very disturbing. I like to uh, credit myself for being Mr. Penn State, you know, <laughs> having played there myself. That's, that's, my, that's my love there. I love the school. I'm very proud of where I came from. However, I was looking at Penn State, Michigan, watched the whole game. It was 2 minutes, 50 seconds left, and there was a bad call that was made. And Penn State had no timeout. So I'm thinking, gosh, way, what a way to lose a game. I turn the station. About two hours later, I get a tweet from my agent, Jesse, and he says, uh, what a crazy game. And I'm like, what game are you talking about? So he writes me back and says, you're kidding. <laughs> so I still didn't know what the game was. So then Nate calls me. And he said, I told you I'm never wrong. Never. Because we were just talking about before the game, Penn State was going to upset Michigan. So I said, what are you talking about? He said, about the Penn State-Michigan game. I said, yeah, we know Michigan was the favorite. Okay, they won. And he said, well, what are you talking about? He said, you didn't see the end of the game? I said, no, we lost. I thought he was going to rub it in my face. <laughs> he said, it was four overtimes. Yeah. I still didn't believe him. So about 30 minutes later, I just happened to look online, and I see all these people. The, that could have been one of the biggest post Joe Paterno games for the program, and I and I missed the, the overtimes. Easily, easily. I would agree with that. I, I mean, it just they beat your school. I, I was in shock. Mm -hmm. I, I was in shock, but I was actually on the road, so I'm checking. I got my app, and I'm like, you know, you put it down. Right. We got this. <laughs> no, same thing. You get the tweets. Liz, what's up with your boys? Like, what's going on? Well, can that was the second overtime. <laughs> yeah, but well, well, can somebody tell me, though, what happened in regulation that enabled Penn State to get the ball back with a minute? Did Michigan fumble? I or I, to be honest with you, I turned the game off just like you did. I started playing FIFA. Yeah, because they had no timeouts. So how could Michigan, did they fumble a snap or something? No, I have no clue. I don't know either. I just know total breakdown. <laughs> I listened to Coach Hope, you know, today, and he just said, you know, Blame the in, you know entire offense. He's like, I can't really, you know, pinpoint. He's like, we just lost. I think the offense with Michigan's problem is they're depending so much on Devin Gardner. So yeah. much. You, you mean he's like a one man gang, and you have nice receivers out there, uh, but it just seemed like every time I looked up, it was Devin Gardner, you know, running for nine, running for seven. Uh, it, if if you just bottle him up, I think Michigan may not may not be as good as they. They yeah. could be if they opened it up more. Yeah, the first few games have been shaky when you think about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, am I shocked Not that at all. loss? Not at all. Michigan Not at was, all. Michigan was due for a loss. Yeah. yeah. I seen yeah. it coming. Yeah. They Unfortunately. Lost to, they they, they should have lost to Connecticut. Yeah. yeah. But a miracle happened. It, so. it, is Ohio State the class of the Big Ten by far? You gonna make See, me admit that? I, yeah, I mean, I understand. Well, you kind of have red on a little bit. It's caps. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, uh, I think Nebraska is gonna give them a run for their money. Me being a Nebraska boy, I can't, I can't, I haven't. They haven't shown me something that. Where do they play Nebraska? 
How long? Oh, they're in Lincoln. For sure. Okay, so they do have a shot. Yeah. Northwestern should have beaten Ohio they, State. They should have. Yeah. They kind of folded up a little they bit towards have. the end of the game. But there. with Ohio State beating Wisconsin so convincingly, and then Wisconsin just destroying mm-hmm. Northwestern, it's like, ah. Yeah, you don't yeah, know who's, what do you who's say? who. Right, right. So it's all about matchups. You can't really just take one game and say, oh, they blew them out and they got beat by them. You can't right. do that. You got to just take matchups. Is this, is this exactly. the first year, in you guys' opinion, is it the first year that – Perhaps a one-loss SEC team may not even get to a national title. I mean, it's, it's, it would be safe to say that, just for the simple fact that you know, Oregon looks good. Oregon looks yeah. good, but Oregon is Oregon. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Quack quack. They're, they're, they, <laughs> <I like> exactly. <that. laughs> Oregon, Oregon finds a way to beat themselves yeah. every year. I mean, and you can see Oregon now. Stanford is. They've lost, yep. so maybe they they're going to go in the Oregon game. Like, okay, we can't go where we wanted right. to go, so, so now we we're going to take you out. Exactly. Yeah. UCLA home. is nine, though. UCLA is they're solid. They beat Nebraska Jamar pretty convincingly. Yeah. I want them to take each other out. I'm tired of the SEC. I'm not even going to lie. That's not even you know all the way. I'm with you, know, you on like that. Big Ten thing, I, but I, just I'll tell you what. The SEC is lucky that that Franklin kid from Missouri got hurt. Yeah, because Missouri looked like they could yeah. do some damage to yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, that was a huge loss for them. Yeah. Texas a and M still around too. Johnny Manziel, they're still around. Johnny so Cooper. let me ask, let me ask you this, Lee. Is Johnny? I know, I know, I know how you think. Just, <laughs> just take away your bias. Is Johnny football the best college football player of all time? Ooh. What he's doing on this field reminds you say no? no I, I, I'm, I'm not saying no, like throw it out the water real quick. Okay, okay. Uh, I respect throw the that. bath and bath water out. I'm saying no just because I'm a little older. You know, I, I remember seeing when I was a kid, I remember seeing Herschel Walker. Okay. Uh, I, remember, I remember seeing Bo Jackson. There's a lot of great. Peter Warwick was great at Florida State. <laughs> Peter Warwick, my favorite player of all time. <laughs> you know, there was some great players. Uh, I mean, you can go back just a couple years ago. I mean, there's Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could even give Johnny Manziel over Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush was a highlight reel every game. And it was prime time because we were watching it late. <laughs> At all times. Man, Manziel like, was too. Who? Manziel. Yeah, Manziel. Every play is a highlight. He's a beast. You know, the thing is, I just, you know me, Nate. And maybe, maybe you're a purist too, Liz. I hate offensive football the way it's being played today. <laughs> yeah. I can't stand it. I love it. I, I'm a Big Ten, man. We It's, it's yeah, rainy, you, you cold. Love that boring yeah. football. I just want to see people get beat up, man. I don't like being put to sleep <laughs> while, while I'm watching the football. That's hey, all. offense sells tickets. Yeah. It, it does, you know. But <laughs> but you know what, though? Defense wins championships. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> but, yeah, some of them scores look like NCAA tournament scores. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, looking, at, looking at Baylor hanging 50 on people at halftime. I'm like, I don't even know if you had enough time or plays to get 50 in a game, let alone at halftime, right. against another Division One team. Uh, uh, you know, with college football, we're going to debate this for a long time. But but while I have uh, Liz on with Nate and myself right now, listen, she's a uh, a, a jack of all trades. But but I but I know your passion for basketball, and I know your passion for those New York Knicks. That's right, New York Knickerbockers. I, I, I need you to be sensible on the set now. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the East, all right, let me take the fan hat yeah, off this over yeah, here. Take, take, with, yeah, yeah, with Nate. yeah, yeah, right. take the fan hat off. So all right. If you look at the East. Mm-hmm. Miami, number one. One, no question. Indiana, number two. No question. Chicago, three. With no Derrick question. Rose, with healthy, Derrick Rose, Rose healthy. Uh-huh. Okay, so to me right there, you, those are your three, like, legit championship caliber teams. Absolutely. Well, it's, Mi- well, it's Miami, Miami, Miami and then there's a, a second tier. Uh, Don't Bulls, say Brooklyn. Are you about the Bulls? Don't yeah. say Brooklyn. I, oh, okay, I thought you were going off for Brooklyn. No, please. You're going Don't off for Brooklyn. Chicago. You got to take Chicago off. Okay. Okay. So, for number so, three. So, so Indiana. I think with a healthy Derrick Rose, Chicago, Miami gives them trouble matchup wise. But Chicago could possibly beat them. I mean, Indiana. they give Miami trouble without they, Derrick Rose. They, I mean, that was did. a nice little series. They did. I agree. I, I think Chicago's going to be there, Nate. But, but this is the question: Where do the Knicks fall in that? Are they above Brooklyn? Are they? Where, where do you put them? Uh, you know, I would say. I'm taking off the fan hat. I'm giving them a fifth seed with this team. Now, you know, Brooklyn didn't win out, and they got the big three. (laughs) You know, they got Arnett and Jason Terry and Paul Pierce. But we're not talking 
2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And I think in the mindset of, you know, like sports channels, especially the fans, just hand Brooklyn the championship. And I've seen that many times and said, what, are, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. This is the same, this is wheelchair Paul Pierce. You know, this oh. isn't the truth. Huh. <laughs> Paul Pierce dropped some buckets last season. He did. He hey. did. He did. Hey. He did. <laughs> Yo. He did. But they rolled on up out of the playoffs in that first round. They didn't have Darren Williams round. either. Uh, yeah, they didn't they have Joe Johnson either. And you know he's hurt, right? Who's that? Darren Williams. Darren Williams yeah. is hurt. He's, he's, he'll he stays be hurt. Good. What, where, where, do you, where do you think, and they probably can't see this question because he's, he's yeah, who, fairly. Who are you with? Well, well, he, well he's fairly <laughs> new team? to the area, so he's not going to see this question. He knows his sports, but he's not going to see the, the, <laughs> this question I'm about to pose. <laughs> I personally think, as, as Wizards Media, I think the Washington Wizards have a chance to be a sixth seed this year. Of, I do. Of course you do. Six? Right. <laughs> I do. Whew. I mean, they bring in. I mean, I understand he's, he might be wheelchair Al Harrington too, but <laughs> but you're but you've improved your bench. And Emeka's out, right? He he is, but for a little bit, okay. not for the year. But but you think John Wall looked like the light bulb came off came on his head last year? Like he just he figured out I actually can shoot better than I probably thought I could. And when he started making shots, there's no way you're going to keep him from getting to the basket. So if you look at him, you look at Bradley Bill, you look at you know bringing Otto Porter in. I just think that they're a young team that has potential to really not be great, no way, but to be much better than the Wizards have been in a long time. I mean, you are talking about the East. However. Mm -hmm. Detroit's not going to be bad. No, but I don't. Milwaukee may not be that bad. Atlanta may not and be Rondo that bad. And Rondo could have the Celtics up there with the, you know, Chris Humphreys and. Are you counting the Celtics totally out? No. Because I'm not. No, because I like Jeff Green. I mean, I yeah. do. I mean, you mean counting them out as far as a playoff Playoffs, team. Playoffs, yeah. Oh, no. They're yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. Okay. a playoff caliber team. But you know what they're going to take a hit at? Coaching. Yeah. Doc Rivers is a great coach. And what what the Celtics are going to lose, the Clippers are definitely going to gain. And that's X's and O's. Yeah, and they got a rookie. Yeah. So, I mean, people forget about that. I mean, I like Rondo. I like him a lot. But. Doc Rivers was, to me, Doc Rivers was Boston. Yeah. I mean, because he came in there and changed the culture of the team for him. You don't have Garnett. You don't have Pierce. Uh, it, it's, you, mean, you don't have Ray Allen anymore. Right. It's no, not going to be the leadership. same team. Yeah. If you're you asking me for the wisdom, no. Okay, Knicks. okay, okay. I just want to. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying, because he gave, most Knicks fans don't even give the Celtics any credit. I, I got mean, my fan hat. So okay. they told so, my so fan been, hat. So, so you're being real. Yeah, you're I'm being, being real. This is what um, we do for a living. Okay. All right. Wizards, I would say a seventh or eighth seed, but I do think they make the playoffs. Okay. I you do don't think want eight seed. We know that. <laughs> we don't want the eight seed. No. Nah. Because if you're an eight seed, it's going to get ugly. <laughs> it's nah. going to be Miami. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to pose the infamous question and Nate and me, we, 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 we kindly go at it. Uh -oh. I understand his side of it. But if I were to ask you right now today, in their prime, Michael Jordan or LeBron, who do you go with? Oh, my Jordan. In their prime, LeBron James and Kobe Bryant, who do you go with? LeBron. Okay, that's fair. And everybody normally has LeBron now as surpassed Kobe as the second greatest player. Of they already all time. have him surpassing Bird. <laughs> See, I keep trying to tell him how bad Larry Bird was, and he just, you know. Said he just called him big slow white boy, and I'm like, no, I mean, man, you don't understand. I'm older. I won't tell my age, but no, I'm we, I'm we, older. We, so we when we say I'm same. older too. So, so when, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we go. We so when old. I saw Larry Bird, I saw the the end, the slowing down where he would, you know, they were still making the playoffs, but he was just hitting no wide open shots. Right. I mean, I saw right before the whole Reggie Lewis and Lynn Bias tragedy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. imagine what them three would have been. Well, I said we're yes. talking. Dude, we're Five, talking, six more championships. We're talking no bulls. Yeah. That's what we're talking. Yeah. And that's what I said. Jo Jordan wouldn't have been able to do that. Uh, you know, I always like asking just different people about the about the Jordan-LeBron thing because I think it's necessary. The reason why we're having that conversation is because people are seeing the true next guy that's he's on the hills of the greatest. And this guy's just getting warmed up. I mean, he's, what, 28? So you think about, you know, seven, eight, you know, dominant years, and I'm just giving them that. I mean, guys now with their bodies and stuff, he might be able to play till he's 40 years old. But if he's uh, 
if, if he wins two more championships it's, to it's give him four, is it a wrap it's a at wrap. that point? It's a wrap. For GOAT? Yeah. Could be. Could be. It's, I wouldn't leave it out. I wouldn't leave it out. It's a wrap. And he's definitely the best player in the league if right it, now. If, it, if it's like in, if it's soon. He's, but if it's like two, like one three years from now, one four from there. Yeah. Right. But if it's like, you know, it, during this time frame. If he gets the next four, he's, he's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. Six, That's going to be so hard eight, for me eight, to do that. Seven, you know, it's just hard six, for me eight, to, two, to seven, think. He can shoot, dribble, rebound, still block, guard everybody. Jordan couldn't go left. Jordan couldn't shoot. Uh, so you do think if they play one on one, LeBron would kill him? Oh, he's a beast. Oh, he's one a, on one on one. There's beast. not a question who's winning that. And, and I think little. Jordan's that old uncle who's not ready to let go. He's like right. Al Bundy, right. Polk we, we just talked about that. <laughs> I, I'm actually. <laughs> That's where he is. He's yeah. not no. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually. Greatest. I'm actually embarrassed for Mike doing that because right. yeah. it's not necessary. It's not. Everybody knows how great you props. are, but you have to be. Yeah, you have to be gracious. I mean, because because right. 20, 30 years from now, there's going to be somebody. It's going to be better than LeBron. It's gotta, always somebody on your heels. You got to pass the torch. Yeah. Aretha yeah. Franklin the said that. Always so, someone on your heels. Always. So, sooner or later, people are going to stop liking Jordan. You, you know right. what it is? What you you want. know right. what it is? You're going to go through this when you're my age. It's it's almost like you're holding on to your youth. That's yeah. what it is. But LeBron's wasn't LeBron's not my favorite player though. That's the difference. Right. Well, no, but, but he's the dominant in your Jordan, era though. Jordan, I loved Jordan growing up. I'm just not biased. I know basketball. I don't right. look at oh, I grew up to this. No, if that was the case, it would be Allen Iverson. Right. You could Ooh, make it. That's could, a hot topic on Twitter. I stopped could, discussing. You could make it. an argument Ooh. that pound for pound. <laughs> I'm just saying, pound for pound, you can make an argument. He's the greatest player of all time. I got one for you. We just from a skill set. And I'm a Patrick Ewing fan. That's my favorite player of all Yo, time. Wow. So. Yeah, I got a question for you, Lake. We just had a huge argument at the house. Huge. Almost led to fist fights. <laughs> we was deep. We was uh -uh. deep. Me now. <laughs> rest of the fellas. The, the question was, college basketball, who was better? Allen Iverson or Duke's Jason Williams? That's not even close. Yeah. That's not close. Who? 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 I'm gonna surprise you. Okay. I'm, I want to. I want to hear. I, I'm gonna surprise. I know who I'm going. I'm with. a Georgetown. You know, I went to school there. Yeah. It's Jason Williams. Thank you. It's Jason hey. Williams. Hey. Thank and it's not even close. <laughs> Listen, I. It's close. Was, don't don't take yeah. it that far now. You know why I'm gonna say it's not it's not even close. Got to move away. Because Iverson UK. played with a couple of NBA players on that team. He had uh, Othella Harrington play for a little bit. Uh, Jason Wood, uh, 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 Jerome Williams. Yeah, he played the Detroit for like five, six who, who, who years. Who that team? Not too. Not many. JJ was Redick on that team. He no. might have been a freshman. No, no JJ wasn't so. even on that team uh -uh. yet. Quentin Richardson. Quentin Richardson. <laughs> Quinn Richard did not play for Duke. He played for DePaul. No, but my bad. Yeah. My bad. Not Quinn Richard. Uh, Quinn Snyder did no, uh, no, none of those guys. I'm trying to think who was with uh, Jason Williams. No, Cherokee Parks. <laughs> was a senior then. Shane Battier what was there. What happened to him after the He was a senior. Battier was there. He was a senior. But I don't. Battier but but, but but I don't. I don't. Eldon Brand was there. He was a sophomore getting ready yeah. to leave. They was, he was in the. We talking about NBA players. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Corey Maggette. Co oh, that's what I meant. Corey Maggette. Not with me. Corey mcgetty has been nothing in the pros. Though. It don't matter. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. He was but, shooting but, but, this, but, this, but this is the thing. Hey. The sad part about it is you just named a couple NBA players. But this guy was the guy. Yeah. Jason As a what? A sophomore, right? Yep. Freshman, sophomore. That's just unfortunate. His it, oh, man. That's that his fault. We watched, the, yeah. we watched the highlights, man. I, I almost broke out. So I said, this dude, it was close. Yeah. This dude, six foot, dunking, catching alleys. And was smart. Yeah. It was it was Duke smart. I mean, yeah. smart. That's why he was there. Humble. All right. So yeah. let's 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 throw this out there. <laughs> We're in a new age now. And uh, folks obviously sitting here with uh, Les Robbins and uh, Nate Prater. You got to plug your Twitter handles. I mean, you really need no introduction with <laughs> that. But uh, you can follow Liz at uh, Liz Locker Room. And uh, you can follow Nate Prater at uh, Nate Prater. So very simple. You can follow me at Lake Lewis or obviously at Sports Journey. Yep. We're in a new era now where teams that you grew up seeing, you know, having rivals with certain teams, they're in new conferences now. Is this good for college sports? Is it good for college sports that a Maryland and a Rutgers are going to be playing in the Big Ten? It's just going to be so odd. <laughs> Especially, I, I mean, if you crutch football, basketball, just not have that Duke-Maryland. And then for me, 
with Georgetown, Big East, no more Syracuse. Yeah. That's that's that you, hurt. You, you that do hurt know there's feelings. a ten year ten year thing on the table though. That God, Syracuse that. just put it out that they, the tape the off they've been talking with Georgetown and Georgetown's probably going to sign her where they'll play for the next ten years. Oh, okay. After you just this made year, me happy. of course. All right. You have to continue that rivalry. Yeah. There's too much money to yeah, be made. Yeah, it really is. It really is. But but I mean, if you look at Nebraska. In the Big Ten. I remember I was at Penn State. I played basketball there. I was at Penn State when we were told, you're going to play an independent schedule this year. We're like, for what? They're like, because you're not going to be in the Atlantic Ten. You're going into the Big Ten. And I'm thinking, I don't know anything about Minnesota. I don't know anything about Wisconsin. Yeah, you know Ohio State, Michigan. Right. But I'm talking geographically. It makes no sense for a school on the East Coast to have to travel to Wisconsin. That's I don't even, I mean, it's just, I don't like it. And now you have Maryland. Are you going to want to see Minnesota against Maryland? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> that's Probably ugly. Not. That's a terrible game. Yeah. But that's what you're getting now. You have Texas A&M and the SEC. I love that. I don't love it. I love you, it. you know why I don't like it? I, 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 go ahead. Because if you're going to go get a team from Texas, why not go get the biggest Baddest thing in Texas. Because Texas will have to move Texas their greedy. That's why yeah. they're yeah. greedy. It's all about the money. <laughs> it's about it, the, money. It is, yeah. the NCAA is greedy. Cream. But my thing is, I was so excited with Texas A&M going to the SEC, Missouri going to the SEC, to show off that offense, that no huddle offense. But they've changed and, it. And they've changed the SEC. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Look that, at that's LSU now. LSU that's scoring exactly. points. Exactly. Yeah. The whole dynamic it. of the conference I changed. Hate I hate it, Liz. <laughs> I can't stand <laughs> it. But that, well, that goes back to me being an offensive guy. You being defense. Right. See, I go back to the days of, like, in pro basketball. You know, she's a Knicks fan. You, you can't tell me those Bulls, Knicks, just you come in the paint. You were getting hurt. Ugly. Ugly. Will, will, getting now, now, now not, not to stray here, but. Will LeBron James farewell in the 90s, in the 90s? I think so. I mean, you, uh, no, I mean, I, hey, listen, man. I'm not, I'm, he's so big, we know the talent, he's the same, but, would it, but he's it wouldn't the come as easy, as though, but it would not come yeah. as easy, though. It wouldn't be as easy. I, I truly believe that. He's not getting them calls he gets. Not yeah. saying he gets a lot of calls, but Jordan he's not getting them. He did get them, but I don't. He's taking it for the fact that LeBron's not coming in the paint freely like he's, he's doing not. now. He's not. He's not. No. Nah. Even if he scores, he's going to get contact. But he, that's why he's 280. I don't know, man. Uh, that's why hand check in. That's why he's 280. Do you think LeBron would seriously, like, against the bad boys, have his man, way? Joe Dumar. In the middle Robin of the paint? And, <laughs> I don't see that. Not Maybe even, it's just me. Not even Vinny Microwave. Like, Listen. Get no, no, I mean, those guys. But those guys. <laughs> what Joe Dumars saying? would not be able to check LeBron. But you, Okay. But because of his size. We're talking 6'2 against 6'9. Right. 6'8, nine, six, six, nine. But I'm talking about once he got past Dumars and he goes to the cup. To who, Patrick Ewing? No. He's I'm not talking Patrick against. Patrick Ewing on the ground. Huh? Talk huh? Patrick. Patrick I'm not talking about one, the, man. That don't, that don't matter his size. He, we're not talking about the Kimbe Matumbo. We're not talking about Patrick, a, Patrick Ewing wasn't, wasn't thin, though. He, wasn't, no he wasn't a shot blocker. Was he a shot blocker? No. No, Jordan dunked on him. <laughs> you talking about Kevin Jordan? Kevin Johnson dunked <laughs> on him. I don't want to talk about that. Hello, <laughs> Kevin Johnson. Go ahead and on say Scotty Pippen. Going? Go Scottie ahead, Pippen go ahead, get that out there. I, I hey, needed that to come out. Your whole argument is getting ate up right now. <laughs> I needed that to Kevin come out. Kevin Johnson dunking on centers back then. Okay, who's you the greatest? Shot? Who's not? the greatest shot blocker we've seen in our time? If you look at statistics, it's probably Tim Duncan. If you look at statistics, statistics. Yeah, put Hakeem nah. up there or too. Or Kimbe. Dikembe Hakeem. All those guys got dunked on before. Yeah, of course. But not by Kevin Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Kimbe, you know what? KJ doesn't get a lot of respect either. And he was dominant. And a lot of, you know, when you talk about great players, he's usually not in that mix. Top 20 point guard? Kevin Johnson? Point guards? Yes. I, I'm just. I, yeah, I mean. Point guards. I thought you were about to say players. No. Say no. Yeah, no, no, no. no, 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 no Maybe no, in no, Phoenix. No. <laughs> no. Oh, my no, 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 no. But I'm saying point guards. You put them in top 20? Yeah. Come on. All right. So before we go, we'll wrap this up because we've been on for a little bit. Uh, Matt Shaw. I just want to get your thoughts on him because I, I know you tweeted that you thought he was going to change some minds. I know he got hurt. Do they have a problem there, though? Oh, uh, yeah. Houston no. has a problem. Yeah. Let them play it out, move up, yeah. get Manziel, problem solved. You can't get Manziel. Yeah. 
I'm just <laughs> he's looking at. Me. I mean, they're not going to be that bad. The draft wise, it just depends on where Manziel goes. If you're Cleveland, and you get the number. If you're Cleveland or Jacksonville, and you get the Cle- number one Cleveland's pick, four, three and one in the last four weeks. Yeah. Well, if you're Jacksonville, you have no choice. You're not going Take with Blaine. Not going for Bridgewater. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I saw them this week. First of all, I think Louisville's they, they should be banned to be ranked because if you have an AP API uh, 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 schedule of 179. You, I, you should not be allowed to play for anything. Take nothing away from Bridgewater. I just don't know how good he is considering what he's playing against. I mean, does that, is that fair to say? I need to yeah, see this. Absolutely. You can't say that about Manziel because he's destroyed Sorry. Alabama. I mean, yeah. you know, a, a defensive-minded coach from the pros. Yeah. I just need to see what Bridgewater can do. But, but again. But they're beat. The Texans beat. Whole mentality, just. I mean, what's another quarterback out there that's a that's a pocket quarterback like for their offense that could fit there? College. Everybody's everybody's that athletic guy now. Yeah. So no, I do. I think you got to be able to run. <laughs> I, I think they have a problem. I tell you who I would look at. You guys remember this name? Baltimore has backup quarterback that I think can play in this league and be very good. Baltimore's backup Ty- Tyrod Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ty and somebody, yeah. and if his agent needs to literally cause some kind of fuss eventually, like, hey, my, my, my client wants to play. Baltimore, but he wants to play. He need to yeah. tweet like Vince Young. Tell coach. Give me <laughs> well, I don't know. Cause Vince, cause Vince, Vince Young's trying to get up in Vince, Houston right now. Right. You see that tweet? Yeah. Yeah. He said, yo, coach. Would you do that? Yes. Why not? Why not? Why, Why not? not? He's gonna he's gonna put some seats Why in there. Why some yep. seats. not? Hometown. I like Boy. this. Yeah. Hey, this was this was pretty good. Thanks for letting a lady. Yeah. Oh no, any day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we we need to do this more often. We we definitely need to do this more often. Yeah, we not need, bad. We need more women around, man. It's late, you know what I'm saying? He's so biased. <laughs> she kept it real, man. See, I mean, I like that. How, how am I biased? Man, come on, man. <laughs> Penn State the best. I never said that. LeBron couldn't play in the 40s somehow. I, I did, I, you just say you say anything. <laughs> Michael did. Jordan a suit up right now. Listen, score right, 50. Listen, right. uh, before we go off the air, this guy said Jim Brown could not play in today's game. I'm scared of Jim Brown. I, th- I still think he'd, he'd, he'd fight somebody in the 70s. He terrifies He's me. He's a better actor than he is football player. Yeah. I'm, oh. I'm joking. I'm joking, y'all. I'm joking. Hey, folks, with that, that note, I've got to <laughs> sign out. We had a great one here. Uh, Rockville Hooters will be here again. Uh, I think it's on uh, November 11th. We'll be back here. And maybe I'll get these two back out with me as well. Great time, folks. We appreciate it. receiver the New York Giants and I uh, just came out the show at Sports Journey had a great time with Blake and I uh, definitely want to come back and do it again maybe I'll bring some, some friends next time and I uh, had a blast out here at Sports Journey having a great time being on the show several times giving me a chance to vent tell people and really connect with the fans how I feel about different situations going out throughout the year especially with the NFL uh, and I love it uh, I haven't, haven't met a lot of people out here and just going to continue to come back and continue to grow this relationship with me and Sports Journey and my boy Lake Lewis with uh, Lake Lewis on Sports Journey. Had a good time tonight. Um, felt comfortable just being myself. It's a great interview, a great time, and uh, you know, I'd love to do it again. What's up, this is Alex Joseph from the San Francisco 49ers, number 58. How y'all doing? It's Vladimir Lucas, offensive line for the New York Jets, number 62. Just want to let you know we had a great time tonight with Sports Journey, hanging out with Chris and Lake. Good time, be back here next time. See y'all some other day. Can't wait. Sports Journey, I, I love Sports Journey. You know, I come on here and I have fun, you know, be myself, you know, and enjoy the questions and, you know, just enjoy the atmosphere, of, you know, having conversation and letting everybody else, you know, uh, nationwide or whatever it may be, you know, hear the conversation that's going on. Let us, let everybody know that, you know, football players can do more than just play football. And it's, it's just a great experience. It also helps me out, you know, and of a career I want to pursue in, you know, broadcast network or whatever it may be. And I, I'm just enjoying the experience. It's a great opportunity, and I'm grateful that it's been given to me. It was fun being on the show, Blake. Glad we uh, determined I was the best basketball player in the group. This is, I won all those games, and uh, it's fun talking about the offseason and training with the guys, and it was good to be on. Uh, I got my own sports journey show. I'm a sports journey broadcast network. And I've been doing it for a while now. I really enjoy it. Just, it's not going to be a little up 
tight one where you have to hear about all the drama. You actually get to know the player and get to have a little fun, get to laugh, and talk about sports all the same. So it's a very good thing. It's something you should tune into time and time again and check out all the shows and all the other plays in the end. tell you some of the reasons people get into trouble with credit cards. A job loss or salary cut, an unexpected expense, a divorce, a business loss, or even helping a family member or friend in need. At Consolidated Credit, we understand that debt problems are not about overspending. It's about emergencies and unexpected situations. Consolidated Credit has helped over 5 million people just like you. The options for getting out of debt have never been better. We can reduce your interest rates, cut your monthly payments, and help you get out of debt fast. The time to call Consolidated Credit is now. There are a lot of ways to get into trouble with debt. There's only one trusted way to get out. Consolidated Credit. When debt is the problem, we are the solution. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call toll-free 1-800-426-6016. That's 1-800-426-6016. Call now. If you're disabled and unable to work, pay attention to the following message. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits through Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, we can help. You'll be matched up with an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, deal with Social Security for you, and handle all appeals. Best of all, there's no fee until you receive your benefits. To get started, call the number on your screen now. And keep in mind, there are a vast number of conditions that make you eligible for disability benefits and dozens of additions that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call the Citizens Disability Helpline today for a free, no obligation consultation. Call 1-800-735-0219. Call now. Health Insurance Update. This just in for all uninsured Americans with or without pre-existing conditions. The recent health care bill will not take effect until at least 2014, leaving families and individuals lacking health insurance with no immediate solution to their concerns. Meanwhile, medical problems continue to be the number one cause of bankruptcies. Here's the good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide affordable health insurance for all uninsured Americans and yes, uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Call the number on your screen now and in less than 10 minutes you could receive a choice of affordable plans from the hotline network. This is not a discount card. You will have access to doctors, hospitals, dental care, infant care and emergency services. Call the health insurance hotline now and get you and your family covered today. Call 800-794-1817. That's 800-794-1817. Call now. That's a good pour. Frosty glass. Perfect amount of foam. Thanks, Coach. How's your Bloody Mary? Spicy. Wings? Always fresh, never frozen. All right. Who's the primary on Spider 2Z Snag? It's the fullback out of the backfield. If he gets jammed, I'm hitting the flanker on a curl route. You are good. I know. Huddle up at Hooters. Why would you go anywhere else, man? <laughs> 